Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Blevins-Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today we're going to talk about military insurances and try to help with a little bit of the confusion that at least I always have with which military folk have which plans and what does that mean. This won't be a long video and I'm gonna do my best to try not to confuse everybody, but I actually had some very helpful conversations with some representatives at the insurance companies today and they helped put some things in perspective, answer some questions, and so I wanted to put that knowledge out for you. Now, just keep in mind that there are different plans within these different types of military insurance, and we're not gonna go into detail with those, but I suggest that if you're going to be participating or accepting billing any kind of military insurance, that you find out what kind of plans are involved with the different insurances that you contract with, what your rights are as a provider, what's going to be billed out to the beneficiaries, and all of that in between stuff just like you would with any other payer contract basically so let's get started there are ways that they have divided the country up geographically to help with sorting out who's covered by what and the military and what providers can contract with which plans or which groups so we live in Oregon and so we are considered TRICARE West for Anybody who is active military, a retiree, which means that they spent 20 years in the military and retired with full benefits, or anybody who is a reservist because they're considered active. Um, Rachel, who was the rep today at TriCare West, was very helpful, and you can go on to their website. I'll put the links to all of these um, in the description. So you can go on and you can look and see which jurisdiction is what. But for TRICARE West, HealthNet actually manages the plans. So basically they ask different insurance payers to bid on their behalf of taking care of their beneficiaries. And HealthNet, I took over for TRICARE West, I wanna say three or four years ago, I could be off. Before that, I can't remember who it was, but now it's through HealthNet Federal. So their website states that um, basically TRICARE West is coverage for people who are active or retired. And so the panels are very restrictive to places and providers that are near a base or a place where you're most likely going to have beneficiaries using your services. So depending on what part of the country you are, you and where you're located as your clinic, they go by your group ID and your practice location to determine if you're going to be in network. Now they have options for being non-network and depending on your situation where your location is, it might be the same kind of coverage as being in network or it might be different. In some situations that I've worked with with providers because we're not close to a base but we still want to be able to see any of those beneficiaries if they were to come into our clinic and not have to turn them away, we become non-network participating and basically Basically, we get kind of the same coverage, which is great, but that totally is dependent upon your location and your situation, so you'd want to look into that. If you are close to a base, then you can definitely use that as a resource to see patients, and that is something that I think a lot of people kind of overlook because they're looking at commercial payers, Medicare payers, but you know, serving our men and women of the military, I feel is a great honor, and if you're able to do that and send them outside of their normal network, a lot of times they like that as well, especially if it's convenient for them. Keep that in mind. If you're in the east 
They told me they believe that Humana is the payer that manages it. So HealthNet Federal does the West. She thinks TRICARE East is Humana. Don't quote me on that. You'd want to look into it. So, and it can change every year. So you'll just want to stay on top of that. Next is TriWest. And TriWest, which I get confused with TRICARE West, but it's TriWest, is for VA. So it's for people who served in the military, didn't necessarily, re necessarily retire after 20 years. Maybe they served for eight, 12 years. They didn't retire, but they still are eligible for benefits and they're not active anymore or reservists. So they will have the TriWest insurance. And this is important to see a lot of people because you might have someone who doesn't want to necessarily go to your local VA hospital or their in-network type situation. And maybe you're more convenient, you're closer for them. And so it would be hoove of you to contract with Tri west to be able to see anybody who has served in the military and then co-coordinate care with the big va when it comes to prescriptions and where they get better coverage in that regard she did tell me that right now i had a different rep help me today and she said that to her knowledge none of the panels are full which is great which means that they are accepting most providers to care for these former military people, but it does take at least 120 days from submission of interest and requesting a contract to them communicating with you and becoming in network. So four months is a long time. Try Care, Try West, they all take a while. So just anticipate that and maybe pass that on to your contracting credentialers if they don't know already, I'm sure they do, to try to initiate that as one of the first contracts for your new business uh, to get that up and going. Then there's TRICARE for life. <laughs> so we have TRICARE West, which is for active retirees and reservists. You have TRIWEST, which is for anybody who has served in the military that has medical benefits. And then you have TRICARE for life. And this is for people who are eligible to have TRICARE coverage through the military, but also have Medicare coverage. So they have like the dual coverage. These are people who are over 65, maybe have disability and been granted Medicare earlier than being 62 or 65 when you can start having the insurance. I think it's 65. The one thing that the rep did share with me about TRICARE for life and try care west is you want to say that you're non-network not non-participating because if you're non-participating you wouldn't even be in their system and you wouldn't even be able to bill out the claims for the patient but being in network or non-network make a big difference and the panels, like I said, are very tight for TRICARE West unless you're in a certain geographical location close to a base, but non-network definitely it doesn't make a big difference in our area. And she told me that non-network still pays 100% of TRICARE allowable maximums, which is great. Um, but if you decide that you want to be non-participating on a specific claim, I don't know why you would do that. I'm sure there's situations. Then you can charge an increase of 15% for that claim, but that extra money actually comes out of the beneficiary's pocket, which means the veteran would have to pay that extra 15%. So there's different wiggle room, different things. Um, she told me that if they're a reservist, and but they're active right now because they've been called up, then they will have a different plan, which would allow them to see other people. And then there's HMOs and there's select plans. And that's what I was talking about in the beginning that it gets really confusing. And you just would want to know what plans are within those different pairs that you accept. But I just wanted to review the TRICARE West slash TRICARE East, the TRI-West and the TRICARE for Life because I have been involved in revenue cycle management for a very long time and I know that I figure it out when I need to, but this is something that I feel really needs to be understood because I feel like our military definitely deserve the best care possible and if we can provide that to them then there's nothing more that we could do to help in that way 
And so I hope this sheds some light and clarification on the differences. They use a lot of similar words. So I think that's where I get confused, but definitely I will put the links to all of these three in the description so you can go and check it out. You can check on credentialing status if you've already submitted. You can check by individual or group, and they also have applications on every website for you to submit on behalf of individuals or groups to become contracted. Hit the thumbs up button if you felt like this was helpful material and subscribe to my channel if you have not yet. Hit that little bell icon for notifications when I release new videos. And feel free to leave any comments, questions, or anything else you feel you need to share down in the comments section. Thank you so much and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.